Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum limit of balls in a bag. I feel like there's some jokes in that that I'll avoid for now. The idea is that we're given an array of positive integers. So let's consider the example that we have where we're just given an array of a single number nine, which is not a horrible example. We're also given a, another variable called max operations. I'll abbreviate that with an M and we'll say that for this example, it's two. So we can do up to two operations. So we can take any given integer right now. We just have nine and we can divide it into two integers. When we say divide, what we really mean is that we can split this integer so that the sum of its parts, for example, two and seven or one and eight, something like that knowing that that's the operation we can do and we can split it into any two integers that add up to nine and that we can perform that operation two times after we perform the operation what we want is the maximum element remaining to be minimized that's kind of confusing wording so let's look at an example suppose i split this into let's say two and seven and then i split the seven into maybe four and three this is what we have left over the maximum among all of these is a four. What we want to do is minimize the maximum. Right now it's four. Could we have made it smaller? Well, we can't split these any further. We already did the two operations. We split the nine first, and then we split the seven into these two. But maybe had we split this a different way, had we have done three and six, and then took the six into three and three, then the max is three, which is less than the previous max that we had, which is four. We're trying to minimize this number. And I believe for this example, three is the smallest we can do. Can't really make any of these smaller. So now hopefully you at least understand what the problem is asking. And now before I get into the solution, I guess I wanna say, if you've been solving these daily leak code problems, you might be able to realize that this is very similar to a problem that we've solved before. Well, you might not be able to realize it because it's kind of difficult to come up with, but this is the problem that I'm thinking of, leak code 2064. I think it's when we started doing the uh, sort of cringy thumbnail, but it was like three weeks ago. And I'll just say that today's problem is gonna be similar to this one. Let's consider even a brute force approach. What would that even look like? Let's just start taking some observations for this problem. Well, we know at the very least that the result, the output, it can't possibly be greater than the max element inside nums because there's no way by splitting these we're going to make any of the numbers bigger and the maximum in the original array is never going to be bigger than what it started as. So we know that the max possible result is going to be this, the max in the input array. We also kind of learned from the first example that if there is a greedy approach, it's probably not gonna be super straightforward. Like you could try to be smart, you could try to be clever and say maybe the greedy way is just to take every number and split it exactly into two, if you can. So if this was an eight, we'd split it into four and four, but since it's a nine, we can't do that. So maybe four and five is the best that we can do. But no, that's not the case. It's not that simple, it's not like that. So let's go back to the basics and think if there is a brute force approach, what would it look like? Well, since we already know that there is a ceiling, so let's say uh, one all the way up until uh, X. X is the ceiling, it's the max number in the input. Well, we could just try to work our way down. We could just try to find the biggest one of these that is valid. So basically the first time we find one that we cannot form, that's when we know that we can uh, stop. So if there was a point where we can split this such that it satisfies like these, but this is the first one that it doesn't. Anyways, I think this is kind of abstract. Let me just explain it with an example. So you might see where I'm going with this, but with this example, this very, very simple example, the max number is nine. So that is kind of our right bound. The left bound is going to actually be one. And that mainly comes from the fact that when we split uh, the balls, you want the two new balls or bags or whatever these are called to still be positive. So that's how you know we can't go below one. So this is kind of our search space. And what we can try is go one by one, try nine. Can we split the array such that the max element is nine? This is kind of like our threshold or our max. Um, I think max is probably a better word for it. The max number of operations or not the max number of operations, the max um, balls. 
So it looks like we don't even have to do any operations for everything to be less than or equal to nine. So we're good. And we can kind of just keep going down like that. So now that we uh, checked nine, it's good. We're going to check eight and then we're going to check seven and six, et cetera, et cetera. So for eight right now, we see that nine is actually greater than eight. So is it possible in two operations for us to reduce the nine so that it's less than or equal to eight? Well, we could just split this into uh, one and eight, and that would take a single operation. We have two operations available to us. So it looks like we are good here, um, but we maybe do need to find like a general way of figuring this out. So we're kind of building up our intuition for now. It seems like eight is valid. Eventually we'll get down to, uh, let's say four. So let's assume all of these were good. Let me actually redraw this. So let's assume we just went down the list. All of these are good. We eventually get to four. So we're going to go through the input. There's just a single number here. We're going to check nine. Can we split this into numbers that are less than four? Yes, we can. We can split this into a four, a four, and a one. How many operations did that take? It took exactly two operations. So it looks like in two operations, we can split this array into something that will have numbers no bigger than four. So this is also good. So now we're kind of realizing that the intuition of this is that, first of all, every time we split a number, we will be increasing the number of numbers that we have left over. And every time we do split a number, we want the new numbers, the parts, to be less than or equal to our threshold, four. And ideally, the bigger the parts, the better, as long as they're smaller than the threshold. So the intuition is just this. You take the number you have. In this case, it's nine. You divide it by the threshold. So nine divided by four. We get 2.25. This tells us how many operations it would take. Specifically, just this part, like without uh, the decimal. So it's two right now. So it'll take us two operations. It makes sense because you have a nine, you split it up into three elements. It took two operations to go from a single element to have three elements that are all less than four. So that's the idea, um, but it doesn't quite work with three. So what you'll see uh, if we were to do the operation, if we were here, um, let's say we validated this one, but now we're at three, we're gonna take nine divided by three, that gives us three operations, but that's actually misleading because nine can be split up into three, three, and three with just two operations. So how do we make the math work out? Well, you can just take the ceiling of this calculation and then subtract one from it. So nine divided by three gives us three operations and then we subtract one operation because we already started with a single uh, number. So if we had four, nine divided by four, we get two, 0.25, you round that down, you get just two, or sorry, you round that up and you get a three, and then you subtract one from it, you get two. So we're gonna round the result of this division up and then subtract by one. So far, all I've done is cover the brute force approach. So how it would run on the rest of this example is, okay, we'd find that three is valid, is two valid? Well, can we split nine into groups that are less than or equal to two? Well, take nine and divide it by two, you get 4.5, I think. If you take the ceiling of this and subtract one, it gives us five minus one, which gives us uh, four operations. And unfortunately, we don't have four operations available to us, we only have two. So this is the point where we would stop. There is gonna be a point somewhere here, and we will pick the minimal valid number. Three was the minimum number on this timeline that's valid, so that's what we return. Now, you're probably realizing that this is a linear scan, but we can actually do better. We can actually run binary search on this below search space. I won't go in depth on that because we cover it in that video I mentioned earlier, Leak Code 2064. And I think that this picture probably explains what I'm about to do anyway. But if you're not familiar with this, recommend checking out that video. If you are a neat code user, this is the advanced course, sorry, you should go to the beginner's course. This one, this problem falls under the binary search pattern, but we're not searching like a normal data structure, like an array. We're actually searching a range. So I have a variation of binary search, uh, which kind of talks about that. If you are interested, it has some uh, problems here as well.
So I'll kind of start just by coding up the brute force approach and then I'll try to convert it into the optimal approach. There won't be many changes. So first of all, given some threshold, we want to know if the array can be divided such that all the values will be below that threshold. So I'll have a variable threshold and then we'll have in here counting the number of operations, which initially I'll set to zero. We want to know if all the numbers in nums can be validated and we stay under this number of operations. So we'll return true or false based on that. So for every number, how many operations is it going to take to make this number valid? Well, our equation was this, the number itself divided by the number of like the threshold. This gives us the number of operations. We want to take the ceiling of that and then we want to subtract one from it. And then this is the number of operations. So we want to add that to our variable here. Now, if the total number of operations goes above the maximum operations threshold, then we will return false. So sorry, I shouldn't have used the word threshold when referring to this variable. It's not really a threshold, though I guess it kind of is, or maybe I should have renamed this one. I don't know. But uh, the threshold refers to the max balls. So let's call it that max balls. Now, you might be wondering, well, what if n is actually below the number of max balls? Well, in that case, this will be zero. Or actually, I think it'll be one because both of these numbers will be positive. So this will be one and then this is minus one. So this will evaluate to zero. So we don't need to check that this is positive or anything like that. Now, if we never return false down here, it seems like we validate everything and we can return true up there. So now we're nearly done, actually. Let me see if I can do the brute force real quick. I actually didn't do it myself, but we know that the maximum it could possibly be is max of nums. So like this. And then we want to go in the opposite direction to zero, but not including zero and negative one. So this is just a loop starting at this and then going in the opposite direction. So eventually we'll be able to, uh, using this as the max number of balls, validate one of these. And honestly, we don't even need to go from right to left. We could just go from left to right and just return the max valid one. So I'll probably just do that, max sums plus one, starting from one. We could probably start at two. So our result initially I'll set to zero. We'll try to maximize the result and that's what we'll return. And so for each one of these, I will call the variable or the function can divide I. If so, the result will be set to I and that's what we'll return. So let's see if this works. Actually, if I'm going to be doing it this way, we could probably just return the first one. So at this point, I'll just go ahead and say return I, and then we can get rid of the rest of this. So hopefully this works. So it looks like it probably works. No way to know for sure. But this one does get time limit exceeded because as you can kind of tell from this, the time complexity, we're going uh, this many times. And so this function here is pretty self-explanatory. This is an O of N time algorithm because we're iterating over uh, the entire input array nums. And this part here is the max number from the input. So the overall time complexity, let's say, is going to be O of N. N is the number of elements. And let's say M is the max element in the input. We can actually do better. We can do binary search on this part. So we can get this down to be log M, which is actually a very big improvement, bigger than it seems. And it's very easy to do this. We will just set up our variables like this. I've done this a million times, so I have it pretty much memorized. We set up our search space like this. I always start it like this, left is less than or equal to right, and change it if we need to. And this time we actually are gonna end up changing this condition. I'll uh, tell you why in just a second. First, we're gonna get the middle value. So we're gonna say left plus right divided by two. If you wanna prevent overflows, you could also do it this way, right minus left and then add that to the left pointer. It doesn't really matter that much. If you want to do it the other way, that's fine too. And then we want to know just two things. Can we divide this? So call can divide on the M value and otherwise uh, the else case. What are we going to do in each of these cases? That's the only thing that really matters here. Well, if we can divide it, that means this max balls threshold is good enough. And we want to try to find the smallest threshold. So we are going to take our right pointer and shift it to be uh, at the mid pointer because technically the mid pointer is valid. So we want it to be included as a part of our binary search space. We're trying to get the minimum valid uh, threshold. And otherwise, if it's not valid, it's too small, meaning this middle pointer is not valid. So we will set our left pointer to be mid plus one. And so after we're done with all of this, the left pointer actually will have the result. So let me just make sure that this works first. So we'll return the left here. 
And I think that's the only modification that we need to make. Let's confirm that this works. Okay, actually it won't work because I forgot to update the condition here. So why exactly are we gonna be updating this condition? Because down here, instead of doing right equals m minus one, we're doing right equals m. And the reason we're doing this, this is not like the normal binary search. Sometimes you'd have three conditions. One of them we'd return for sure, and the other two you'd update each of the pointers. But we're not doing it this way this time because this is a slightly different binary search where we're actually looking for the smallest valid element. We're not just looking for a specific target value that's what makes this binary search a little bit different and so if we're going to have right equals mid well what if the left pointer was at mid and right now we're setting right equal to mid then these are going to be equal and maybe they're going to stay equal they're just going to keep uh, executing this line so that's why we need to change this up a bit so now running the code, you can see that it works. It's very efficient. I think maybe if this like binary search part was kind of confusing to you, there is a different way that I used to write this. I will write it like this. Result is, let's say, initially just equal to the max of nums or even just set it equal to the right pointer up here. Every time we find a valid pointer, let's go ahead and set the result equal to that valid uh, pointer. And with this binary search, we're going to only be looking for smaller valid numbers after we find a valid one. So it looks like that will work. And then I think down here, we could just change this to return the result. And uh, running this code, let me just zoom out. So this is the updated binary search code. So running this, you can see that it also works and is just as efficient. So don't get too caught up on like the minor details. As long as you can explain your thought process and do things in a mostly valid way, you should be fine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.